When it comes to those vocations, if you will, that are under undue amounts of stress, sometimes, I'm just going to say we, people, unknowingly reach for things that give them comfort, immediate comfort, because you want to get out of this pain, maybe psychological pain, emotional pain, uh, pressure of deadlines, etc. And then you can see how this progression can happen to where an addiction can morph into another addiction, for example, or grow. Um, the phones are an addiction for all of us right now. We have to tell our phones what to do, not the other way around. It seems like the phones tell us what to do. And so it, when we see this progression of addictions or maybe an enhancement like a growth in the addiction, well, can you speak to that about just the addictive behavior, because you do these great spec scans and you can see areas of the brain light up. And and the prefrontal cortex, which you mentioned just a few minutes ago, the decision-making center of the brain, many people don't know that. That doesn't even develop until age 25 or sometimes age 30, right? Right. And so, you know, perhaps not expecting 18-year-olds to act like adults. Is, yeah. You know, in my house, because we have, Two of them. We have a 19 year old and 17 year old. We call them baby adults <laughs> because, okay. yes, they have all the legal freedom, uh, but you still have to supervise them and right. protect them, which is why I'm yeah. not a huge fan of sending children away to college uh, because uh, their brains aren't developed and they're more likely right. to make poor, poorer decisions. Mm -hmm. um, so protect your brain is really important. And when I first started imaging with SPECT, I scanned my mother and she had a beautiful brain. And then I scanned myself and it wasn't good. <laughs> and I developed this concept I call brain envy because I wanted a better brain. And 25 years later, my brain's fuller, fatter, healthier. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, every day you're making your brain better or you're making mm -hmm. it worse. And right. I just turned 68 last month. And I've seen a whole bunch of 68 year old brains that look awful. And I mm -hmm. don't want mine. Right. And people go, Oh, well, I'm normal. Well, normal is 50. You have a 50% risk of getting Alzheimer's disease when you're mm -hmm. 85. That's normal. And I don't know about wow. you, but I'm not mm -hmm. okay with that and so not okay working hard mm -hmm. to keep your brain healthy no matter what your age mm -hmm. i like that you're pushing back on that there's no need for us to be in that statistic that in that category right that ultimately when you understand and... my work it's a choice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and addictions put us in that category quicker right they absolutely can. Mm. Anybody mm -hmm. that's had an addiction significantly increases their risk for mm -hmm. premature aging and Alzheimer's disease. But the good news is if you get serious, you can yeah. reverse it. That is great news. That is really great news. And that's where healing and growth come in. And healing is becoming more of a buzzword, it seems like, in society Um but progress is hard for people. Growth is hard for people, right? It's an option. Growing is optional. We grow older chronologically. That's not an option. But growth and embracing the healing part of life can be painful for people. What, can you speak to that about um, moving into that? Right. Yeah, either, either way. way. Right. You're right. right. You're right. I yeah. think focused on health is way easier. Than way being easier, sick, you know. Yeah, and, and it's just habit that ultimately yeah. you tend to have the same thing for breakfast. You tend to have mm -hmm. the same sorts of things for dinner, for lunch. Mm -hmm. You engage in the same habits mostly mm -hmm. every day because mm -hmm. the brain is lazy, and yeah. if you just focus on better habits, yeah. it, you're going to do the same thing with less suffering. And yeah. I know at 68, among like virtually all of my friends, I'm the healthiest, which means I have the best energy and the best yes. memory. And, you know, I'll probably work until the day 
I'm not here anymore, but I do it because I love it, not because I need to. Nice. Nice. Something to aspire to. And lastly, I was going to ask about celebrating victories because oftentimes in perhaps our society has trained us to just keep going. We do live in a microwave society. We like to accomplish it and then just keep going to the next thing, the next thing. But there is something to be said about pressing the pause button and celebrating even the smallest victories and how, if, if you can speak to maybe how our brain responds to that, to the celebration of like a, this worked, let's celebrate it. Celebrate it. Celebration helps to wire habits. Uh, mm-hmm. So I worked with BJ Fogg at Stanford for six months on developing nice. tiny habits for the brain. What's the smallest thing you can do today that'll make the biggest difference? And so there's a cue to the habit. You do the habit and then you celebrate. Even if it's like, yes, or I'm so proud of you. My favorite way to celebrate, and I do this every day, is when I go to bed at night, I say a prayer. And then I go, what went well today? What went well. And that's mm. my celebration. And, I like you it. know, negative stuff will come up and I just imagine a big broom sweeping it away. And I start from the beginning of the day and I'm on a treasure hunt every day, just looking at the cool things that happened, even the micro moments of happiness, Mm. which for me, Mm. I make brain healthy hot chocolate for my family every night, just that first sip um, or a decaf cappuccino in the morning I make for my wife, just the first sip. Um, you know, I have, and I have so many wonderful things happen in my life. So focusing on like we played football with my grandchildren and just beat the socks off of them. So that made the highlight real. Um, okay. Wait, I thought you weren't a fan of football. Well, this is like <laughs> touch football. Okay. And my grandson is 13. Um, they have an emotional support animal and they said, um, you guys are going to need the emotional support animal after we beat you. <laughs> I love <laughs> and it. <laughs> we beat them so badly that they had oh, to good. hang out with Chewy, the emotional support oh, dog. <laughs> but, um, but that made the highlight real. And if you do this practice every night, even every when night. the world is hard, even when you lose someone you love, mm-hmm. even during a pandemic, you're disciplining your mind to look for what's right way more mm-hmm. than what's not right. Not right. That not is such a, good is such a good thing to remember. Thank and I like the much. treasure hunt. I'm going to remember that phrase, treasure hunt. That's good. Yeah, I like it. Everyone. Well, thanks again. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, this is, we could just keep talking. There's so much good, yummy, yummy information in all of these books. And so um, just loving it. Thanks again for your contribution to society, for your time today and blessings. Keep going. 